Hi, welcome back to the day two wrap up from ACC 2023. I'm joined by my good friends and colleagues, Deepak Bell. Welcome, Deepak. Thank you. Suzanne Barron, welcome. Thanks. Lots of hot stuff today. Let's start off with the uh, BioVast study, 1,500 patients looking at whether an immediate revast right during that hospitalization for multivessel disease in ACS, if that's not inferior to waiting up to six weeks later. I think you know we're always a little nervous about doing it immediately. Uh, but there was no difference, uh, non-inferiority was met between the two strategies. One thing though, MI was significantly reduced with the immediate revast, and these were spontaneous MIs, not procedural MIs. So that kind of stuck out for me. I mean, what do you think, Deepak? Well, I think it should influence practice for sure. This is one of the trials from ACC that I would take home and implement. I guess I was actually nervous about the opposite situation. I was worried about waiting to complete the revast, that is waiting, you know, say six weeks to do it or four weeks or whatever. So I've always kind of liked the idea, if you're gonna complete the revast, maybe not do it the exact same procedure depending on dilute and so forth, but do it that index hospitalization, right. so. This supports that, I think, in terms of limiting spontaneous MIs. Absolutely, yeah. because there's some early hazard to just leaving those other lesions alone in the patient that's already presented with plaque rupture. Yeah. Suzanne, what do you think? I absolutely agree with you. And I think, you know, it really is going to depend on, is this something that we do at the time of the initial PCI versus do we do during the same hospitalization? And I'm with you, Deepak. I've actually been pretty uncomfortable sending some of these patients home and telling them to come back in a month. This really provides some data to suggest it's the right thing to do to get these patients revast, at least during that, you know, initial period. Another big one was the UK mini trial looking at a mini thoracotomy uh, with laparoscopic uh, procedures to do a mitral valve repair versus opening up the chest. Uh, you know, they had expert operators on both sides. You got to go to a hospital that had an expert in the mitral valve repair of either way. Uh, I think it was about 330 patients, no difference in a lot of the heart outcomes. There was a little longer time on the pump and the cross clamp time for the laparoscopic approach, the mini approach. But on the other hand, they got out of the hospital quicker. Right. Uh, you know, the proportion of people with early discharge were greater with the mini approach. What did you think, Deepak? So I, I, to be honest, I was sort of thinking that there'd be a bigger win for mini. But having said that, there wasn't a loss for many. Length of stay is a little bit lower. I think a lot of patients like the word mini when they hear it. Sort of reminds me of what Bruce Lytle, a famous cardiac surgeon at Cleveland Clinic, used to tell me when I say, well, let's, what about a mini thoracotomy or mini this or that? He'd say, look, if you're doing bypass, just open them up full exposure, do what you need to. He never was convinced there were that many benefits for mini, and you know, maybe he was onto something. But having said that, you know, I think shorter length of stay, if there's no downside, probably fine, just go with mini. Yeah. You know, I actually, I, I honestly wasn't terribly surprised by the results because I think actually the TAVR trials have shown us that, you know, mini thoracotomies are not that much different than having a full a full thoracotomy. We saw that in the patients who got TA access after TAVR, they really didn't do much better than patients who were treated with surgical AVR. Um, you know, I, I do think that it's one of these things that I want to also take is that these were very experienced operators and you mm -hmm. said that. And so this isn't necessarily if you don't have the uh, experience doing a mini a mini mitral that everybody should just go out and start doing it. It definitely has to come with some learning curve and an experience center. And I think that for me was the big takeaway is we can try it. It might be helpful for some patients, decrease your length of stay, but you have to be experienced if you're going to be doing it. Yeah, surgeons might not like that message, but, you know, I think you're right. A thoracotomy is a thoracotomy. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have a lot of great science, basic science. We have a lot of great clinical science, but sometimes what's lacking is implementation science. No one's getting the drugs that we, or devices that we've worked so hard to develop. There was a study called the Better Care Heart Failure Study. About two thirds to three quarters of the time, people who are qualified or should get an MRA are not getting it. And so what they tested were a couple of strategies either getting an alert during the visit with the patient saying, hey, this person should be on an MRA. It's a single alert during the visit or messaging where they're repeatedly sending you messages between the encounters. The hypothesis was if we do all that, we will up the odds of people getting prescribed the drug. We found you know, about an 11.7% rate in the control arm without intervention but it more than doubled, say, up to 29% rate of prescriptions if you got that alert during the encounter. So 
implementation science is the new basic science <laughs> over on the political side. What did you think, Suzanne? I absolutely, and I think it's a really important thing. We, unfortunately, there's so much stuff that we're thinking about with our patients, so many new medications, so many things that we need to cover in a short period of time, that even having just that little reminder to say, hey, your patient qualifies, when they're sitting there in front of you, that's going to get you to be able to say, you've got to get this prescribed. Particularly, I'm not surprised that that, you know, had that effect as opposed to the intermittent messaging in between where it's a lot easier to just, you know, get click fatigue and right. ignore. Right. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Hit them once, hit them hard. That's the way to go. That's what this shows. Yeah. But, you know, still to contextualize, the rates went from very low to low. So, you know, MRAU still yeah. remains pretty bad. Pretty bad still. Yeah. Well, knowledge is, is kind of power, but knowledge with implementation really is some power. We really have to do a lot more in the way of implementation science. A lot of great implementation science here this year at ACC. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Thanks to all of you for joining us here live from ACC 2023.